Anastasia, I wanted to talk to you about another target today. Um, now, most martial artists have the sternum or the, uh, the uh, windpipe as a target, and they jab in there with specialized weapons or going in uh, with uh, many different tools. And it's a great weapon. Uh, it causes gagging, it causes um, loss of breathing ability because you've cracked the uh, windpipe, the throat clenches up in a reaction, the, the muscles around the, the throat clench so the person can't breathe. Now, the problem with this is um, it's very effective. Uh, however, it's extremely dangerous. And the reason for that being is um, you're going to cause um, permanent damage uh, and you could cause suffocation and death. And um, in today's litigious society for a self-protection um, system, you don't need to face that court of law uh, again. So uh, I got a better target for you. Now, it's not in the hollow pocket right here. It's behind, okay? You have this muscle right in through here. Okay, and I'll show you this on the diagram. Now, in back of this muscle, or innovating this muscle, is the ansa cervalis nerve. Okay, and what we're trying to do is not push that. Okay, you can't push it because you're going into soft tissue, and there's too much flex. There's not a reflex. Okay, now that's why um, stomach 11, people cause this stomach 11, uh, the people that do the pressure points. Um, but the stomach 11 does not work. Okay, it's not a, a nerve that is going to cause um, uh, dysfunction. Okay, what you need to do is get behind that muscle. Okay, with your thumb or your fingertips, I prefer fingertips, it's much more sure. The thumb, you can damage yourself. I mean, it's good to hook in there, okay, and get right behind that structure, but let's face it, the, the four fingers is much more solid, and you'd pull on it like the iron claw from the bubishi. Anyway, um, going into that structure, if you get behind this um, muscle structure and in back of the clavicle right in through here, okay, you're going to be able to pinch that um, ansa cervalis nerve, and what the name of it doesn't matter, okay? You're pinching the nerve against the back of the bone, and that sends a neurological shock, and it drops that whole arm and that whole side of the body out. It causes intense pain, and it causes uh, body dysfunction and weakness because um, the acute message is going into the brain rather than down to the muscles to hold the legs, the um, torso, the hip structure all firm and strong to hold up your body weight. So that's why the body collapses. Now, you can't really get an unconsciousness with this unless you really jerk it. But then again, you have um, many other problems. You could like punch into the windpipe, cause a little difficulty there. Um, in many different um, scenarios. And if you go in deep enough, I mean, if you go way into the pocket, you're going to reach the carotid sinus, you're going to reach you know, much more uh, important vascular tissue as well as um, neurological tissue. In fact, you could uh, pinch off on the phrenic nerve, which innervates the diaphragm and makes the breathing go. Or you could even get the vagal nerve, and that's a whole different ball of uh, wax. So, for your targeting, don't think stomach 11, which is on the surface where they stick the needle in or they do a little pressure to soothe the body. Think about going in back of the structure with your fingers and just digging in there and then pulling back like the iron claw of the tiger. And that's a much more effective um, way to attack that nerve. And again, very debilitating, very quick. You can use it on the ground. It's not so sure on the ground because remember, we're relying on um, the body weight collapsing on inefficient um, stability program or the muscles weaken so much that the body weight takes you down. If you're already on the, on the ground, it's going to cause you pain, but the person is just going to instinctively tuck into it and they're not going to be able, they're going to be able to resist it. So you want to make sure that this is a standing um, technique only from a clinch position. You could be getting in behind the person. You could dig in. You could slip the arm and come up right up underneath the arm to catch your fingers right in there. Many different ways you can get to this target. Uh, it's from a frontal attack only. Getting there from the rear is going to be next to impossible. Um, you could dig your thumb in, I suppose. But again, the thumb is such a weak and um, uh, unprotected structure that it, you would be foolish to do it. I mean, dislocation of that, that finger is um, very possible. So again, we want to protect ourselves, not only uh, uh, on the, in the conflict, okay, but we also want to protect ourselves in a court of law. So don't damage the windpipe by going for that sternal notch and just jabbing in there and um, rupturing the windpipe or causing the muscles to constrict the breathing. Let's go into the neurological system because the neurological system snaps back within uh, seconds to a minute.
Whereas if you hit this and it constricts the throat or damages the windpipe, it's a lot longer and of course suffocation and permanent damage could occur. So again, here's a great target for you to work in your martial technique, whether it be standing grappling or um, even in fisticuffs if you blocked and you came in as a protective action and you caught into the person's throat. I've even seen this used um, in a real situation. I never personally used this one. I've used other targets. I've had three real situations where I've used Q-Show uh, and it worked amazingly well. Uh, but I have seen this done uh, by Secret Service. Uh, a long time ago before um, I was professional martial artist, I was working for Raytheon, who did, we, what, what, that's the firm that developed the Patriot missile system that we used in the first Iraqi war. And uh, President Bush came to our factory and um, was con congratulating the, uh, the people that um, uh, developed the system and the people of uh, the, the, the Raytheon. Anyway, um, he's come through the crowd. Of course, people are trying to touch him and pat him and shake his hands and all this stuff. And one guy got it just a little too close in the crowd. Saw the Secret Service just reach up, grab, drop the guy. At the time, I didn't know what he did. I was thinking it was here. I, you know, I was a martial artist at the time, but I wasn't a full-time professional. Um, and what I saw is he grabbed right into the guy's neck. And I was always wondering, well, what the heck did he do? Because, you know, I've been poked here in martial arts class. I've been hit with that tiger's mouth thing and never fell down. Okay, I, I felt like I was choking, and I felt a lot of different problems, uh, like in swallowing and whatnot, but it didn't drop me, so I was always wondering what that was, and uh, when I got into this Q-Show study, that's one of the first targets um, I started really researching, and I looked at it from the stomach 11 standpoint, and I was pressing on it and stuff, and it caused dysfunction, and some people, yeah, they're a little sensitive, they'll drop a little bit, but to get that full drop, that full body um, dysfunction that, that that individual uh, went through, I had to research a little deeper. And that's when I started getting into anatomy books and really looking at the anatomical structures and how that occurred. And I have that answer now, and that's why I'm giving it to you. So um, I'm, thank you for coming by. Uh, I know there you want to see techniques all the time. Uh, I don't have a, um, uh, people readily at hand right now, so I hope you are, understand the explanations is also a valuable part of your education, probably more so than the training. The training is just to get you more suited for the, um, a, a using the target, but to get the um, information on how to properly use it and what the target actually is and what the possible ramifications of that target is, that's essential first. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned. There will be more. Here we take a look at the, um, the neck muscles in the area of the uh, nerve we're talking about. You can see in the sternal notch right here, uh, let's zoom in just a little bit. You could uh, do some real damage. There's no, um, no muscle in front of this, and that's why you have that exposure right into the windpipe to crack it. Now, on the back here, you see that there are nerves inside, okay, but they're recessed off to the side and, and backed by all these muscles right in here. Okay, you have three layers of muscles. You have this uh, sternothyroid muscle. You have this sternothyroid uh, again, uh, another sheath of it, and here you have the sternocolloid mastoid. Okay, so to get into those nerves right there is virtually impossible. But turning this guy around a little bit, if we take a look in here, you can start to see there's a little nerve that peeks through. And let's move this guy just a little bit more over here so we can see in here. And we'll turn him just a little bit. But you see this nerve right in back here. And it runs all the way down. It, the, the, the model here stops here, but this nerve comes all the way down and in. And that's what we're attacking. We're getting in behind those structures right there. You have to reach your fingers in behind the clavicle here, okay, reaching back and squeeze the muscle and this nerve that runs all the way down there, it, and you squeeze it right into the back of the bone, okay? So it's right in this area right here, okay? You can see that little nerve right there. So let's take a look um, at what that nerve is. Let me see if I can uh, fine-tune and click on that. Yes, I got it. It's the answer, sir. Cervicalis, and um, it's a, a, a branch to the sternothyroid uh, uh, nerve also. So we can see that if we get our fingers in deep enough into the central pocket, come behind here and pinch that nerve against the back of the bone, that's what's going to cause the results. So again, 
that's the um, ansa cervicalis and cervicalis I, I can't do this latin stuff too easily but you can see how uh, big a nerve it is up here uh, but as it gets down uh, between the muscles here and the clavicle it gets a little thinner so again that's a little bit more detailed look at a better target on the head and the neck okay and that's learning q show